Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome to episode 101 of Talk 4, the quickfire podcast where we ask four great questions to unique and interesting people. Behind the mic today is your host, Louis Scoobian. That's me, and let me introduce our really special guest for today, Sabrina Cardone, who's going to be answering some questions today. Sabrina, welcome aboard the Talk 4 podcast, episode 101. That's a strong number. Uh, just please say hi to the fine people who are tuned in today and just give us a kind of a 30 to 60 second this kind of rundown of who you are and what you do and then we're going to shoot some questions. So my name is Sabrina Cardone. I'm the oldest daughter of entrepreneur, real estate owner Grant Cardone. Um, I have helped my dad with uh, his real estate, with his work. I've spoken to thousands and thousands of people, the largest audience ever being around 35,000 people um, when I was only uh, around 11 years old. Currently I'm 14 and um, that's pretty much who I am. You know, I work with my dad um, and that's pretty much my interests. I've spoken to thousands of people, like I mentioned, and that's who I am. Super cool. And, um, you know, so good to see someone of your age getting after it like you are. And uh, I figured we'd uh, we'd kick it off with the most important question I could ever possibly ask. Uh, how is Doodles the puppy doing? <laughs> oh, he's doing fantastic. Oh, he's the cutest little dog. We just he's a multi poo. He's only around two months old. He's about this big. Uh, he has curly brown hair and he's super cute. If you guys want to follow his um, Instagram, you can go to Mr. Doodles Cardone and you'll see a bunch of pictures of him just thriving. He's the cutest little dog you'll ever see in your life and we love him. That's hilarious. Yeah, and I, I saw the, the Christmas video. So, so cute and they're definitely a great addition to a great family. But yeah, so uh, question one, well, kind of two, but we're going to ignore that one. <laughs> question one is, uh, yeah, yeah. so what I wanted to kind of start with is, you know, you're the youngest actually podcast guest I've had so far on the show and typically I'd, I'd kind of ask people you know how they got into their career uh, professional expertise but your one I want to start a little bit differently here then so I know you as obviously not your average kind of 14 year old kid like you you're doing some pretty cool stuff um you've already got such a great kind of online presence and you're doing speaking to like I said three and a half thousand people that's no joke um what do you think kind of sets you apart from other youngsters around your age and um how did you grow up you know grow up in the Cardone family how did that kind of affect your mindset and approach to life would you say I mean it's just you clearly you've taken off <laughs> thank you um, I mean, I don't think like I am special compared to any, you know, average 14 year old. I just think I've been given a lot of really important opportunities, a lot of which, by the way, I've taken. I've taken these opportunities that I've been given and made sure to make the most of these opportunities. Um, I think, you know, any anybody my age can do some of the stuff that I've done. And, you know, I believe like, like I, obviously I've worked for most of it and I have gotten myself up to that point where, you know, I'm responsible, I'm able, I'm capable, competent, all these kind of words I can, you know, I can work. And I've, I've been raised that way. You know, when I was younger, my dad used to say, your name is Sabrina Cardone and you can do anything. So I've been raised that way. I can do anything my whole life. I've known that I can do anything. And with that, I've just kind of been able to carry out my goals. Also, I mean, the speaking, my parents have always put on these huge, massive conferences and given me a spot to speak on the stages. And I've been doing that for years and years and years. And as I've gotten older and older, um, I've gotten better and better at this, uh, at this, at speaking, at working. I work with my dad at real estate. That's one of my uh, main interests real estate that's what I want to do when I'm older so I mean it, it is a lot I've been given these opportunities but obviously you know I'm going to say it's also that I've taken these opportunities mm, absolutely well I mean you know, like, like people say I mean if you're given a, a chance to grab an opportunity you've got to go and take it um but you know clearly you've got a knack for doing this because you're so kind of camera confident so kind of what I wanted to go into at least in the second question was from what I've kind of seen and people that I know out there in the world today and social media and stuff, people kind of around the sort of youngster age, you know, kind of your age and even, even my age to some degree as well, you know, people are hiding behind filters and people are hiding behind like half face, quarter face selfies and stuff. And people think it's kind of a small thing, but I feel like it's something quite big, actually. So one of the things I want to touch with you on here just today is like you are so camera confident and you've got this ability to, obviously, like you said, speak to thousands of people which is so impressive and I think that in business today having camera confidence and self-confidence is literally so so critical especially in a world where we're going into 
really social media dominant in almost every industry. So my question really is how have, you know, have you ever felt that kind of shyness and stuff towards these engagements and everything? And uh, do you have like any advice for building the kind of confidence and content creation ease that you have? And, you know, would, you know, which might help someone listening in who's kind of in the same boat of that sort of, you know, anti-cameraism, you could say. <laughs> I mean, of course, you know, there's times I don't want to like do a podcast. There's times when I don't want to have to speak on a stage or when I'm really nervous. You know, I, I always get really nervous before I speak. Um, but it's just important to know that obviously you can. There's no reason that like, you can't speak on a stage just because you're a little bit nervous. Sometimes you have to do it when you're scared. I've heard that phrase passed around a lot. And I identify with that because, yeah, you have to do it when you're scared. You're not always going to feel super elated that you have to you know for adults that you have to go to work or that you have for kids you have to go to school so sometimes you have to do things even when it's a little bit uncomfortable and I think that is probably one of the the more important principles of building up that like you said uh camera confidence self-confidence I always like to think if you're if you're going to go and speak to someone and you're not going to say anything that's a lie you're going to be able to speak it if it is the truth, you can speak it. So whenever I like to speak to stages, I like to speak to people like you. I just like to make sure like I'm being honest how I truly feel because you know, you have these principles. It's not, it's going to be easy to communicate. So as long as you know, you're being honest with how you feel, I think it's, I think it's pretty easy to communicate um, about your opinions. Yeah, absolutely. So true. Um, how do you manage that then? I mean, you're obviously very young. When did you start kind of doing these things and like the speaking engagements and stuff? Like when was your first one? I mean, when were you kind of thrown into the the deep end there? You know, were you chucked in uh chucked into, into the shark pool stuff with the a few thousand or how did it all start? I mean, I don't think I was ever chucked into the deep end. It was obviously, you know, a slow progression. I've always been like I've never been super introverted or shy. Although, um, what is interesting is I'm not a big people person when I'm around just you know small groups I don't find the need to talk a lot but I am good at communicating one-on-one -on -one. I am good at communicating to large groups small groups whatever but it's not something I do like very socially as my favorite thing so just an interesting little fact about me um I mean ever since I was super young maybe seven eight nine I've been speaking to smaller groups larger groups just saying my opinion and um you know, it's something I, I really thank my family for because I, I think without that, I wouldn't have a lot of the confidence that I do have today. Mm, no, no doubt about it. Um, well, it kind of gets me thinking then. So obviously you've had, you know, you've, you've got a family that's definitely put you into these positions and you've got a family that's really giving you the opportunity to develop that confidence. But if you're someone kind of listening in right now, you know, a youngster, I know one of your big things right now is inspiring kids. Um, if you've got like a kid or someone younger that's kind of listening in right now and they are really camera shy, but they want to develop that confidence and start doing, you know, building their brand or, or whatever it is they want to go into on social media, how would you start to kind of develop that? Like, where would you begin with doing that? If you're like at rock bottom in terms of confidence, like you can't put your phone out and take a selfie and feel good about it. How would you begin with developing it? I mean, I've, you know, I don't feel good about every single, like every single video that I post on social media, every single speech that I do, they're not all my favorites. Sometimes you're going to have some that are like, oh, okay, that wasn't my favorite thing I ever uh, submitted, ever created. But hey, you know, I, I did my best. And um, you're going to have some of those. You're going to have some podcasts that maybe are not the best podcasts to listen to or to, uh, you know, to have created. And sometimes it's going to be a little hard and there's going to be that, that kind of block you know, whether you want to create a business or, you know, start so social media. I'm not going to like sit here and pretend like I've done all this myself. Like I have had help from my parents. I've had that kind of stepping stone. But for my experience, um, you know, consistency is key with these things. You just have to start, you know, make one video, post it on social media, make another one. And then after that, you're going to kind of grow a following or even the same with business. If you continuously, you know, consistently are putting out products, eventually, you know, it's going to gain some traction. So that's kind of, in my experience, what I've learned from looking an outward perspective towards building businesses, building social medias, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. Um, 
So one of the other things that I kind of wanted to touch on too was um, when I was looking into you know, how your stuff and your you know your day to day bits and bobs. One of the things that I noticed that we relate to actually quite a bit is uh, you know when I was twelve years old, I went to homeschooling full time to pursue my tennis career when I got fully sponsored. And you know, truly in hindsight, one of the absolute best decisions me and our family ever made for me. I mean, it was just it's changed. I'm I'm here right now because of that basically. Um. But back then, you know, it was very uncommon then. And I actually got lots of stick for it and stuff. And there was a lot of adverse opinions and there was a lot of doubt and everything around it. But I feel like nowadays that's kind of like more normal. So I'm just interested. I know that you're homeschooled. So when did you start with that? And how do you feel about that decision there? Any kind of backlash from that at all? Or are you kind of, you know, you're, you're rocket fueling down the, down the path of it? No, homeschooling is 100% like it is what has made me who I am today what I've been able to do the fact that I can communicate so easily so openly and you know so well because I, I do think I am a good communicator um I was homeschooled um after third grade so my first year of homeschooling was fourth grade uh which I think is fifth grade for you you guys in the UK um but after that I mean I, I never liked school I I I did great. I excelled at my, at my uh, schooling, all my, you know, I excelled at the grades and the school and the material, but it was never my favorite thing. I didn't, I never liked going there. I didn't like the teachers. I didn't like the other kids. I mean, like I liked them enough, but they weren't my favorite people. And um, eventually, you know, I was like, guys, what if I get homeschooled? And they were like, that's a great idea. Because we had also found out that year that the next year that I would be going into, I would need to be in school more, which would limit us from traveling, limit us from moving around places. Cause that year that I was in school, we traveled to 19 countries. So I wasn't in school that much. And although I finished the grade, everything was fine. Um, they were gonna require me to be in school more. So I became homeschooled. We continued traveling all around the world. Now I was just homeschooling myself. Uh, you know, obviously I had a tutor and I had somebody who was helping me, but um, like that's when I really started to enjoy school as like a thing. like on its own, not just like a way to get, not as a via to, you know, eventually grow up and go to work. Uh, I actually did begin to enjoy school. And I think it is because of homeschooling that I can communicate that I'm so competent. And, uh, you know, I have extremely high responsibility, you know, I get the stuff that I need to get done, done. And I think that's because of homeschooling and that I had to kind of take care of that for myself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how did your subjects change when you went into that? So obviously in school, you're kind of thrown into, I mean, what I like to call kind of, you know, the, the one size fits all sort of curriculum and everything in school. But when you go homeschooled, you obviously have a bit more flexibility then over what you would go into study. So did that sort of change for you to kind of cater towards at least where you think your career is going to be going? Um, how did you kind of uh, manage that? I mean, I definitely got to go to work with my dad more. I got to go to more museums, like actually learn in the real world. Um, but aside from that, you know, now I'm I'm taking like more classes that I'm interested in. I'm in 11th grade. So I'm supposed to be, you know, in eighth grade or ninth grade, but I'm in 11th grade because of homeschooling. So I'm quite ahead. Um, I don't know if you, you know, there's ninth, in high school, there's ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. So I'm about to graduate high school. And, um, you know, I'm only 14. You're supposed to do that when you're 17, 18. So, um, it's because of that I could get so far ahead. And also now I'm having more subjects now that I'm in high school, more subjects that are catered, more catered toward me and my interests. Although, you know, there's still obviously the basic classes you have to take as a requirement, but there's more classes I, I get to take that I'm interested in and having a lot of fun with. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, when, when you go down that route, at least for me as well, it opens up so much time to like actually study stuff that you are actually going to make use of, especially in that kind of career path. But Anyway, so the third question I kind of wanted to ask you uh, going into this as well is something that I found really interesting. So I've been a follower for quite a long time. I love the content you create. It's always good fun. Um, and I've noticed that influencers nowadays tend to have something unique about their content. So the guy I had on last, his name is T Mac, or Pat McNamara for the 100th episode. He has his little basic dude stuff videos, which are great. And they always garner loads of traction and stuff. And it's always a, a good laugh. Um, then you've got people like Daniel Mac who have the kind of what you do for a living bits and bobs. And it seems like these kind of people who are blowing up online have a unique little kind of content thing that they do. And uh, you've got random advice of Sabrina. Uh, how did that start out for you and why? Like, uh, tell me the story of that and maybe add in some tips for people oh. also to kind of get inspired and find their own little unique content quirk and bits and bobs like that. 
it's actually a really interesting story. So um, I've always loved talking about random little tidbits of information. And for some reason, no idea why, I have a lot of them. So I know a bunch of tiny little random things that I always tell my parents like, oh my God, did you know that blah, 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 and blah, blah. And they're like, why do you know these things? I'm like, I have no idea. I don't even know where I learned them. So I have all this random information, you know, this random advice. And it all started when I was really interested. I don't know if you know what it is. It's like a rice cake from Japan. I was really interested in this little rice cake called mochi. And I was like, it was like, I was so excited, you know, because it's it's like this, they come in little ice creams and they come in all <laughs> kinds of different little shapes of them. And I loved them. So I made a little video about them. And ever since then, I've just been like, oh, this is a little random piece of advice I can give to you guys. And it's been very fun. You know, it was my dad and I came up with it together. We were in California um, because we recently got a house there and we were working on renovating it together. So we randomly came up with it and it's just stuck ever since. That's so funny. Um, but you know, it's one of those things that it's like, so it is random, right? But it's also kind of a unique yeah. thing to you. So you come out with that and people know you for that. Um, out of interest, how was the traction on those? Because obviously that's, I, I would at least say kind of looking at it, that's a massive part of personal brand. And I think it's really important for people to at least have something a little bit like that, that's kind of unique to them. Um, so, you know, what's the, uh, what's the response like to those and how does that affect the, uh, the kind of the metrics around your page? Do you get loads of views in those? Does that kind of build your following? What's the, uh, how do they do? Yeah, it builds my following. You know, there's some of them that a lot of people have seen. There's some that are just that don't do as well, you know, just like any any videos. But I think the other week I got like a million views on some video that I did on TikTok or something. Nice. Um, so, I mean, I, I do get a lot of traction. You know, I think there's one video on TikTok of me doing like a sales call or something to people like, oh, you should buy this. And those that that video always gets a lot of attention. So I'm not I don't really know why some videos get attention more than others. I think something that's really interesting is about me because I'm a kid and, and you know I don't look like I mean maybe more so now I look older, but especially when I was a little bit younger, I look like a kid and I'm doing these things that like kids aren't doing. So they're very it's kind of an interesting thing for people to see and they're like, oh, what's happening here? So um I think that's you know a main part of why some of these videos get traction. I think that's why some of them are interesting, but I'm not sure why some get more than others. I think, I think it's an interesting thing. I, I want to know more about it. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it's interesting. Um, well, I, I feel like we have to, now that we're on the subject, we have to do it. So I'm going to put the spotlight on you. Um, can I get a, a, an in-person live talk for a podcast random advice for Sabrina right now? Oh, I have to thank you for putting me on the spot. I mean, <laughs> I could talk about, you know, random advice with Sabrina, um, you know, take opportunities because right now I'm taking an opportunity by doing a little podcast with you instead of you know, maybe doing some something else right now. So take opportunities where you get them. Who knows? It could be a fun experience. And if it does nothing, it, you know, it gives you some more experience, gives you some more data, more knowledge, and more ability on how to you know, interact with the world. Wicked stuff. I love that. I just put on the spot and just wags that life changer straight down. That's brilliant. Um, okay. So Obviously, um, kind of where I go in the last question is kind of towards like the future and stuff then. So I think what I really want to ask is, you know, you're, you're a youngster, you're getting after it and you're doing really well with it. So what are your kind of your plans and ambitions going forward? Then you obviously have a great legacy that I'm sure you're going to uphold in the Cardone family. But what does Sabrina want to have or be or do in her future career in life? You know, where do you where do you see yourself going? Yeah, I mean, I think Sabrina, obviously, I really want to be a massive real estate owner. That is the thing that really, um, you know, indicates as something that's interesting, uh, fun, and something that I already do have a lot of knowledge about. I, I can have a good little conversation about the real estate market or what's going on with this property or this property. And I do understand a lot about it. So it's something that I'm interested in. And I want to uphold that part of the legacy with my dad. Um, the social media stuff, obviously, I'm going to uphold that, but it doesn't quite indicate me to me so much as the real estate does. Um, you know, I just want to be a massive real estate owner. And then with that, I want to be able to help people and, you know, like contribute my part to the world. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a that's a, a great and modest way of, of, 
of putting it absolutely and you know last thing kind of want to ask you before we, we uh we go into shameless plug and stuff is you say obviously on the, the page and everything that you want to inspire the next generations of kid and you know kids and stuff too so i think one thing i just want to ask you then is if you could kind of have a a, a minute of airtime to all the uh all the young kids and aspiring entrepreneurs getting out there and preparing to get after it right now what would you sort of uh relay what message would you relay to all of them right now and where do you think the kind of at least one of the biggest gaps is in in those kids that you want to fill in in what you're going to be doing I mean, you know, you have kids that are already, you know, super inspired and are entrepreneurs and want to go do something. And you have kids who are not, like, you know, they just want to be kids and both are fine. But um, I just want to say, you know, it's important that that whatever you do want to do, you commit to it and fully, you know, decide to do it. Discipline, self-discipline is more important than motivation, I think. You shouldn't really have to rely on some kind of whim. You feel happy one day. So, hey, let me do this um you got to do self-discipline so whatever you want to do in life if you even know what you want to do in life because not all kids know what they want to do yet whatever you want to do in life whenever you figure it out you have to commit to it fully and you can't just let it be you know a, a watery kind of commitment it has to be a commitment and you gotta you know pursue that um I mean, you know, social media is something that's kind of interesting for me to talk about because, you know, you have the filters, you have like these lies, people portrayed as perfect people or perfect families or, you know, perfect bodies, whatever it is, none of it's actually true, none of it's actually real. And I think um, social media is actually a very dangerous thing for young people today. I mean, you're developing, you're growing and you're learning a lot about the world. I think teenagers are taking in more, learning more than they even are aware of. So. I mean, you just got to be careful about that aspect of the world. Um, you know, social media is dangerous and it's kind of weird. So you just got to, you have to, I mean, you have to just realize that it's not all real. And um, I mean, I don't know, you know, I, I know a lot of entrepreneur type kids who are like, oh yeah, I'm going to drop out of school because, you know, it doesn't matter. And where I do agree, school for the most part is kind of useless since we're not going to be using most of this in the future. You have to get through school. You can drop out of school. It doesn't, it does not look good to, to be a high school dropout. So, I mean, you know, get through your school, do it with good grades. Cause in life, you're going to have to do stuff that you don't want to do. I don't always want to do school, but I get good grades at it. You know, I work hard on it. And if you can get good at the things that you don't like, you're going to excel at the things you're good at. And that's pretty much the advice that I can give to any young people, entrepreneurs, people your age, my age. Um, that's I, I give that kind of advice. I, I think that advice is applicable to everyone. So love that. Great stuff, Sabrina. Well, look, that has been the uh, the four questions for, for today. And, you know, great advice there. Really, really appreciate your time. But before we wrap it up, it's time for the classic shameless plug then. So, Sabrina, feel free to take a minute and promote anything that you're working on, your social media, um, anything that you want my people to go and take a look at, and then we'll, we'll sign off. So um, have your minute and uh, tell our people where we're going. Yeah, you guys can find me um, on TikTok or Instagram at Real Sabrina Cardone. No other names are applicable. <laughs> um, and on YouTube, you can find me at Sabrina Cardone. I'm, I don't really use YouTube as much as TikTok and Instagram, um, but you can find me there. Um, and if you're interested in, in donating to any charities, you can donate to the Grant Cardone Foundation, where we help underprivileged kids um, learn about you know finance, um, real estate, leadership, all these important things things that are not taught in school you know my dad when he was young his father died and he didn't really have a leadership position in his life that's what the Grant Cardone Foundation does it's meant to kind of be a leadership uh position for young teens and kids so I mean that's everything I'm working on thank you so much for having me on your show great stuff sabrina yeah honestly thank you so much for joining me today for the talk for podcast absolute pleasure having you on and uh thank you guys for tuning in as well this has been episode 101 so proud to have got past that 100 it's, it's really cool but yeah guys if you'd like to listen to the past episodes go and have a look at the channel and if you'd like to listen in for the future ones too we've got great people booked in make sure to hit that subscribe button and spread some love by leaving a like and a comment signing off for now fights on and good night see you next time <laughs>